Hi, my name is Mitchell and this is a video. Today, I wanted to talk about how to get your first job as a developer, even when you haven't sunk yourself into debt and despair by getting a degree first. This seems impossible when you first start out, but it's completely possible with a more purposeful focus on the things that truly matter. Currently, I work as a front-end engineer, but prior to 2018, I had no work experience. I had to figure out a lot along the way in the past two years to progress to where I am. And now I would like to pass those tips on to you guys to hopefully help you kickstart your career. So let's talk. Tip number one, be open and honest. So when it comes to getting your first job in IT, it can be really tempting to lie about your experience or just stretch the truth really thin about where your knowledge and skills currently are. So let me get this straight. You're an expert in, in Python, C++, JavaScript, Go, C Sharp, Java, Rust, and you helped build Facebook. Yep, yeah, uh, every, every language that is mentioned there, if I wrote it down, definitely something I know. Uh, you've got like the Python and the, and the, and the Java or the JavaScript one. Um, what else? Oh, and, and the Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, me and Zuckerberg like this. Uh, I pretty much did it all and he just kind of took the credit. So, uh, yeah, uh, I, know, I know what I'm doing. Trust me. I, I know what's going on. Definitely. Definitely. You may also feel like without lying, you have no chance getting that job. I'm here to tell you that that's completely wrong. While lying on your resume may seem like a good idea at the time, it will almost immediately be found out and you'll look 10 times worse. You can't control what level of experience you have or whether or not you have a degree, but what you can control is how open and honest you are as an employee and sort of how you come off towards your potential employer. So be honest, use that honesty and openness to show your employer that yes, what you lack in experience, you actually will be able to make up with, with an eagerness to learn and a completely clean slate for them to instill good work values onto. Having no experience framed in the right way can be a positive thing. Tip number two, always be learning. You should pretty much always be taking this approach throughout your entire career, but it's especially important when you're first starting out in the industry. Learning how to code is one of the easiest skills to find resources for online. I made a video about this a couple of months ago, but in my opinion, the best way to learn is to be working on your own project. This is going to look great on your resume. It's also going to give you a lot of skills that you can then show off uh, to potential employers. It may also expose you to other areas which can also be beneficial for your job search and for your own personal skills, such as learning how marketing works when it comes to developing your own application, uh, UI UX and how the user experience, you know, impacts how your, your app is perceived. And also like graphic design, just take, a, take a, a shot at, you know, sort of designing your own layouts for different pages or how your app's gonna look. Um, and while it may not be great skills to start off with, if you can do all of this, you can wrap it all into one and build your own app, touching as many areas as possible, you're actually going to be really valuable to potential employers. Basically go out and learn the latest new trends or technologies or frameworks or anything that really interests you, because that's pretty important. Make sure it interests you because you're going to learn it way faster and you're gonna be much more excited about it. Um, and you're, you're going to have all of these new technologies and uh, new skills that's actually going to make you valuable to more older programmers who may have tons of experience and may know a lot. There's a lot that you could learn from them, but there's also stuff there that they could learn from you because they've been in this industry for 10, 20 years and they don't exactly know how the latest iterations of some JavaScript frameworks work. So wake up every day and go find something that you're excited to learn and learn it. You can do so much in one day and if you focus that energy on learning for, for two or three months, you are easily going to be able to land a job somewhere and get started. In the comments down below, I encourage you guys to let me know something that you want to start learning today. Or if you've already started learning something in the past few days, put that down as well. Tip number three is have confidence in what you don't know. This may seem less intuitive than the previous points, but I can promise you it's been integral in me landing certain jobs uh, and the growth that I've had during those. At the end of the day, there's really no escaping it. Without experience, you're going to be lacking some fundamental skills that can only really be gained from being in the industry uh, and working with your peers. You can choose to shy away from these, living in constant fear that someone's going to one day expose you because you don't know how a database works or the language that the system is built on, you only know how to Google it and that's about it. Although that's most of 
what the job is. But don't shy away from these things that you don't know. Be upfront about it and focus on personal growth. In my experience, employers have never shamed me for not knowing things. For instance, your boss is gonna wanna trust that they can give you a task and it's going to get done. And if that task involves doing things that you just don't currently know, then they can at least feel assured that you will ask for help instead of just randomly trying to press buttons and write in scripts that are going to either break half the system or leave a trail of bugs behind them. Okay, so the boss has asked me to simply do that thing with the database. So I guess I can just Google database commands and I'm sure I'll figure it out. Five minutes later. Interesting, drop tables. That's a weird term, but it seems like it could be useful. Let's give it a shot. Tip number four is work hard and always push for more. This seems obvious, right? Work hard to get anywhere, but it's actually important to be quite conscious about your want to be better at your job and to excel in the job that you've been given. When you manage to land your first job, which is awesome, congratulations, you may be stuck with a junior developer role or a QA role or some tech support role. Um, and some people can stay in that role for, for years without really moving that far up or gaining too many skills. But if you want to be a developer and you're stuck in QA as like a stepping stone, make sure you're conscious that this is a stepping stone and the way to move to the job I want to get uh, I have to learn certain things and I'm going to tell my boss that that's what I want to do. Constantly be pushing to take on as much responsibility as you can reasonably take to let your boss know that you are very eager to learn and you don't want to be staying in your current role forever. Most IT companies can actually have a budget for personal development and they may be able to help you get that online development course that you feel is going to make you so much more of a developer or is going to help you learn a specific language that you're really interested in. As long as you can convince them that it'll help you on the job as well, don't ask them, oh, can I take this course in Python when it, Python doesn't touch a single part of your code? Make sure it's related to what you're doing. But uh, most companies will be eager to skill you up a bit because remember, the better developer you are, the more you learn yourself, the better developer you are for the business as a whole. In my first IT role, I went from tech support to junior DevOps in a matter of like four months because I was constantly pushing for more and more responsibilities. So don't be complacent. Don't sit there in your comfy role and be like, I'm doing my job and everything's good. Constantly try and push to do better and be a better employee. Tip number five, the last tip is to stand out from the crowd. So in my first job in IT, I was eventually given the responsibility responsibility of sifting through all the different candidates for a, a tech support job that we were advertising for and to pick out the, the who seemed like the best ones to move on for a phone interview. No, 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 no. Yeah, all right, yeah. No. Mitchell, how are those oh, resumes coming yeah, along? Yeah, uh, the resumes are, uh, yeah, they're coming along great, boss. Ugh. No, no. No. This helped me discover that 80% of applications look exactly the same. In my experience, especially in IT, and they will be just immediately discarded by most companies. So try and think if you can add some personality to your resume while keeping it professional. So for instance, in my resume, uh, I had a picture of myself in the in the top right corner, and then I also had like uh, like color, just a little bit of color. Most people have a straight black and white resume. I chose, uh, you know what? I wanna put some color in there, and also this is what I look like, deal with it. This has actually worked quite well for me in the past with employees saying that this was actually a positive thing and helped them kind of like see a little bit more of who I am, and it, it's out a little bit more from the same black and white wall of text resumes that they're used to seeing. But keep in mind that I have read online that some people don't like this. People don't like, some people don't like having like a picture in the resume or having some color. There should be a standard way to do it. And for me, if I'm gonna be turned away because I made my resume a little bit more creative while still staying 100% professional, but it's got a little bit of color, it's got a picture of me. If that's gonna make you turn me away because I'm not standard enough or something like that, then that's probably not a company that I would have wanted to work for in the first place. So it helps me weed out potential employers who we're going to I'm gonna like I'm gonna get the job there and then two weeks in I'm gonna be like wow I'm working in a jail cell or something like that I want to be able to enjoy the place I work as much as possible and so if they don't like the bit of personality I've showed in my resume then we're just not a good fit for each other now referring back to tip one when it comes to your resume don't put skills on that you don't truly have and more importantly, don't list every language and technology you can possibly think that you've ever touched before in your entire life. So Mitchell, I can see here that you've listed JavaScript as something that you feel confident using, which is great because this is this is a front-end role. 
Um, but you've also listed other things, and I'm curious why you felt the need to add these as well to your resume. Uh, I, let me just read them out for you here. So you've got Docker and Go, which is, okay. Uh, machine learning, augmented reality, typing, uh, online research, Adobe Photoshop, uh, every tool in Microsoft Office. I mean, you've just listed them all. Uh, and finally, you've, you've ended it with, with, um, with Minecraft. You've added Minecraft to, to your list of skills. So I'm wondering, oh, uh, I'm incredibly insecure with my skills and feel deeply inadequate compared to my peers applying for the same role. Uh, right. Sure. Also, I really just like Minecraft. It makes you seem like either you don't have true competency in anything or you're just a liar. Let's say for instance, you're applying for a front end position and you've told them that you feel really confident using React and you've even showed them a few projects that you've built before. They're probably going to know that you know how HTML and CSS works, right? They don't need you to put every single thing down on there. Only put the stuff that's relevant, the big important stuff, that's it. No fluff. Focus on proving the skills that you have in the interview. The resume should just be to get them interested to call you back. Get them to, but don't lie. <laughs> get them to call you back because you seem like you're an interesting person with a decent resume. Uh, and then in the interview, that's where you go, okay, here's the projects I've worked on. Like I'm showing you firsthand. This is how I learned them. For instance, my resume included things like my old YouTube gaming channel. Uh, now I didn't put on there like, oh, I made Minecraft videos because that's kind of pointless, but I did put on there that I, uh, created a business, you know, I created content online, which is like this business, um, that made X amount of dollars in revenue. Um, and I even framed it in a way that like I made, cause I did this when I was a teenager, mostly, um, I made X amount of dollars in, in ad revenue before I'd even finished high school. See, now I'm turning something like, you know, making dumb game videos. Uh, and turning it into something that's actually quite impressive from a more of a business point of view or framing something in a way that is actually relevant to your job. And to top it all off, it kind of makes you a little bit more interesting. Most people are going to be coming in with, I studied this degree and I got the degree and now I want to work in the job and that's it. Show who you are as a person and do it without just listing, I like to play basketball and draw things and I play video games. Don't put that on your resume. Put things on your resume that, that tie to the skills that you might have or abilities that you feel confident in. I don't know how to finish that sentence. Nah. There you guys have it. Five core tips to help you guys kickstart your careers as programmers. I'll be answering any and all questions that you guys have in the comments down below. So don't hesitate to ask something. There is no dumb questions here on this video. Thanks for sticking all the way to the end. You guys know what to do if you guys enjoyed the content and want to join the community. Uh, I also have a Discord channel and some socials in the description down below. Until next time, my name is Mitchell and this has been a video.